welcome back so we are in the last few lectures in this discrete math course so we'll be using this time to revising what all topics we have done or seen in this course to start with we have seen proof techniques now the basic idea of proof techniques starts from the fact that we want to check whether a statement is correct or not for example say n square minus n plus 41 is a prime is this statement true or not now there are two ways of solving this problem the first problem first way is to prove it empirically or experiment and the second one is a mathematical proof where we use mathematical reasoning to prove the statement Now, for experimental proof, say for this example, the technique is to of course try out for all different values of n and once we are convinced that for quite a number of values of n this statement is correct, we conclude that this statement is correct for all n. The good thing of these empirical proofs are that they are easy to prove. But the back side of this is that these proofs are not necessarily accurate 100%. For example, in this case, while n square minus n plus 41 is prime for all small values of n, but for n equals to 41, it is not true. And if we had done it experimentally, we might have missed this n equals to 41. So the statement is false, but empirically we might end up saying it is true. On the other hand, for the mathematical proofs, the advantage is that it is 100% accurate, there is no chance of error in the deduction. But the reverse side is that it is hard to prove, it is not the easiest thing to prove. Mathematical proofs are always better than empirical proofs because it is 100% accurate if we can get it. And we will always like to have a mathematical proof. Now to come up with different mathematical proofs, we have to use the, the notion of propositional and predicate logic. And uh, we have seen how to use the propositional and predicate logic. It basically are statements that are connected using and or not implies if and only if and so on and two quantifiers for all and there exist and there are various ways of approaching the uh, proofs and we have seen quite a number of techniques right. so a statement is always of the form a implies b Now, either there are various ways of proving this A implies B. Now, depending on the structure of A and structure of B, for example, if A can be split into two AND of some numbers or B can be split into OR of some numbers and so on and so forth, we might use some different proof techniques, which are all of them are governed using this propositional logic statement. So the proof technique that we have seen in this course are constructive proof, proof by contradiction, proof by contrapositive, induction, counterexample. The existential proof we have not seen in this course, but unfortunately is beyond the scope of this course to prove this existential proof or give this existential proof. But in case you are interested, feel free to check in the internet what does existential proof mean. It will require some amount of knowledge of probability to have solved these problems, to use to prove it using the existential proof. Now the main question is that we have so many different proof techniques that we have and the question is that which proof techniques to apply and the basic idea is that 
there is no thumb rule for any of these proof techniques. You have seen quite a lot of examples of as to for which problem or which kind of problem, which kind of proofs can be helpful. Uh, so there is some thumb rules that are there which can be used in practice, but there is no proper law that this has to be applied or so on. Hence, it is more of an art that has to be developed by you. So I'm not going to go through these problems line by line and just going to revise them. Just for example, if B can be written as C and D, then we could split up into smaller problems. Similarly, there might be some redundant assumptions inside A that can be removed. And sometimes proving something stronger can actually be easier to prove. After you have simplified this problem by using these various techniques, the, the, this constructive proof technique has two cases. Number one is the direct proof where you start from A and slowly end up solving B. Sometimes the direct proof can be magical and hard to understand. And a simpler proof technique might be to go from the backward as to if you have to prove B, then what is necessary and what is necessary and so on. So we saw that the direct proof technique either from going from A to B or from B to A, both can be handy at times. Now, other than this direct proof, there is this another proof technique in the constructive proof, which is the case study. The idea is that once you can break the assumptions, that means A implies B, in that case the A, into and of smaller cases, then you can split up into cases. We saw this one very helpful in when we were doing certain kind of number theoretic results. And these case studies are extremely helpful for breaking down those cases and hence smaller number of problems. Two other proof, proof techniques that was very helpful, which was the proof by contradiction and proof by contrapositive. The idea is that to prove A implies B is same as assuming that B doesn't hold and A holds and then get to a contradiction. That's proof by contradiction. Or assuming mean that P doesn't hold, prove that A doesn't hold. And this is called proof by contrapositive. Now, if a statement is given which is not true, then one way of solving it is to give an example where it's not true. For example, if the, the proof technique is, the problem is for all x, prove ax implies bx, then you want to prove the negation of the statement, which is there exists x, ax implies, not doesn't imply bx, and which is same as giving an x. So this is what we call as counterexample. So we have direct proof, case studies, proof by contradiction, proof by contrapositive and counterexample. Now one more proof technique that we have spent quite a lot of time on is the induction. As I had told earlier also, it is the most powerful proof technique that you can imagine for the discrete math kind of subject. The main idea is that if you can split the problem into infinitely many countably, infinitely but countably many subsets or problems, then you can solve them in a very clever way. For example, if you can split up A implies B as P1 to P infinity, for example, in this problem, we have seen many of these kind of examples where to prove that the sum of the first n numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2, it's same as, okay, for the sum of k numbers is k into k plus 1 by 2. And the problem thus becomes for all k prove P 
pk is true. Similarly, for other problems that we have seen, and once we split up this problem into smaller problems, the main idea is that, so this is the problem we have to solve for all k prove that pk is true. There are infinitely many subproblems, so one cannot expect to solve all of them one by one. But the idea is first let us prove the first case, p1, which is we call the base case. Then if for all any k greater than 1, if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. And if you can solve it, then we would be done because p1 is true implies p2 is true, p2 is true implies p3 is true and so on. And hence this would prove that for all n the value pn is true and hence the problem. Now this is true thanks to this principle of mathematical induction which tells us that this particular way of solving infinitely many problems is indeed true. So it's, you have the base case, you have the induction hypothesis and you have the inductive state. And if you can solve all three of them then you are done. Now, as you have seen in the course, there are various different formulations of the induction hypothesis or, or the mathematical induction and depending on the problem again one might want to try out some, uh, some kind of induction over the other. But the point to note is that mathematical induction is indeed the indeed an extremely strong proof technique and along with the other proof technique that we have, we have got our foundations solid for how to get mathematical proofs. And that's it. So in the next video, we will be revising our uh, graph theory and linear programming modeling. Thank you.